Oh man, that's a big win. Oh, I'm live, aren't I? Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm just I'm having some fun here with some Dabo. I'm getting some big wins here. Let me see. Oh. Let me get everything set up here on my end. Just getting some big wins. I just won 20 million GPL. This quality gambling. Oh, yeah. Getting all the GPL. I'm up to 333 million. Making the big bucks. Of course I am, SpaceFX. That's, that's quite the name. Okay, let me check Discord here. Oh, Telcar, you're in voice. Yeah, let me drag you up. And let me see here. Hello there. We are live. Let me... I was going to say the other call I'm on. I just have to be uh, on the... both calls on the same computer. <laughs> gotcha. Let me adjust the volume here. Yep. So. I think I'm going to have to turn the game volume down here in just a second. The headset I have, I have like independent volume control for game and voice. So. Gotcha. We've got Dabo going on in the background. Um, so we are going to be messing around with the Mars class pilot escort today, courtesy of Telcar here. And you said you wanted it to be a reroute build. Howdy, Megla. I did go through and grab the consoles off the other pilot ships. Was there anything else you wanted me to, to do with the build specifically? Did you want me to incorporate all the, the new pilot or the, the old Sea Store pilot consoles? Um, well, if we did that, I'm assuming it's basically going to be the same thing as if um, you just were going for a DPS build, just minus the three least useful consoles in that build to replace the yeah. pilot ones. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, I mean, some a simple translation like that, we don't need to go into like super detail about that, but maybe cover... I guess the question is, is, are you doing a video or is this just a live stream thing? I'll live stream, but I can flip it up to be a video afterwards. Okay. So if you're doing a video, then I would suggest that, you know, maybe just go over verbally the pros and cons of having the pilot console set for the, you know, the pilot cooldown reduction and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or pilot abilities anyway, because it doesn't do anything for your pilot maneuvers. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, uh, for some odd reason, I thought it did when they first came out with the pilot maneuvers. I thought it was a 24% cooldown or something like that reduction on pilot maneuvers. And I was like, no, it's pilot abilities, which I, because I didn't understand the difference between maneuvers and abilities at the time is why I was confused. <laughs> uh. Chat. Got quite a few people in here. Excited to see some pilot ship action. Cool. I was switching to the Mars class myself now. I was on my uh, tort boat. So. These weapons off. I'm thinking even with reroute, I'd probably go with basically the same thing as a as a cannon build. The difference is you could do Omni's aft with reroute rather than just normal turrets. Hmm. Okay. So I don't see what you're doing yet, and at the moment, uh, let's see, 
friends online. Uh. Oh, I'm on a KDF character. Oh, okay. And I'm hidden. Okay, well then I can't really see what you're doing or anything, so I've got no idea what. Um... Do you want me to go over like what I have so far? Yeah, if you want to turn your stream on, I can. Like, okay. On Discord here, I can share that if you want, or. Yeah, I've got no problem doing that. Might be a little odd because my um, I'm on an ultra wide, so it's uh, 5150 by 1440. So I don't know if that uh, helps you for your. It'll stream look a little not. funky on on the stream, but I we can see the majority of the build, so that's fine. Okay. Okay. I could temporarily uh, swap that down to a window to like 3440 by 1440. Oh, no, you're fine. It it. It's visible here on the, the stream. Okay. <clears throat> so this is what I've got for my reroute to weapons so far. Um, <clears throat> I am experimenting with uh, having the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo up there as well, because I was trying to get rid of Tactical Team, and the only thing that was useful was Torpedo High Yield um, for that slot. <laughs> um, other than that, I could throw a uh, distributed targeting in there. Yeah, I'd uh, probably go. I probably wouldn't bother with the torpedo on this unless you were doing a torp spread. Um, with high yield, I don't think you're going to get too much out of that torpedo on on a pure do build. The other thing, which people in chat are pointing out too, is with the the quad cannons, those are going to drain your engine power, which will cause or could cause reroute to shut off faster. I have numerous ways of getting around that. Gotcha. Um, one, uh, this. What? Oh. Um... Sorry, I'm trying. I'm confused. You're fine. What happened to my. Okay, so. <clears throat> Even without, oh, right, because that other loadout is my uh, plasma rapid fire. Um, my plasma rapid fire loadout is this here, and that's uh, radiant plasma weapons. Um, but it has basically a whole bunch of stuff specifically designed to crank the power transfer rate up to 566%. Gotcha. Um, combine that with the duty officer on my roster here. Uh, all three of these are the miracle worker ones to get the um, power. Yeah, yeah, the the fifteen percent chance that power levels maximum for five seconds. Those those stops are quite underrated. Twenty four people run, but the other ones like nineteen and twenty nine there they don't get much love. Yeah, I I use them uh, anytime I'm using a reroute deserves the weapons, or anytime that I'm running any warbird because I hate the 40 power deficit that warbirds have <laughs> hold on i gotta let a dog out Robert. and it's the only way i've managed to be a uh, managed to make a warbird viable for me <laughs> gotcha but i'm not a top one percenter i'm like maybe a top five percenter i think um I'm a top one percenter in my fleet, in my armada, but not across SDF. <laughs> so, Let's see here, the three trays but, bothers me. The what? The the just the three trays. I'm I'm so used to, to like having the full ten trays now. Oh, okay. That that's because oh, of how geez. I have this. <laughs> this that's because of how I have my uh, bar set up. Gotcha. Um, okay, so. The, uh, 10, 1, and 2 here is my Q key. 10, 3, and 4 is my E key. The one where the uh, re reroute powered forward shield, that is also where my fire all is uh, bound as well. And that is my T key. Uh, everything to the right of that is my G 
key. So all of my reputation stuff that if I'm using those, I'm generally setting them all off at the same time anyway. Gotcha. So I just all have them bound to the same key. Then nine, eight, and seven, those rows are all my spam bar. Then six, five, and four are all my hot key for uh, for my alpha strike. So and because of how it does it, the reason everything's mirrored is because it'll start at this side first, and then it'll jump over to this side and hit the next one. Gotcha. So you know, so it just basically by mirroring it, it forces it to go in a particular order. Um, so anytime something's available that I always want up, the, anything's the highest priority, I have up over here, and it'll go from here, do 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 do, and then it'll drop down to the next one, do 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 do, then it'll drop down to the next one, do 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 do. Gotcha. Uh, and that's just because of how this funky thing of how STO does their uh, key binding for stuff like this. And then it does the same thing for the uh, for the alpha strike. It'll start here, go down the list, then down over here, and then down through here. And you just basically spam those. And I just have them set up to where the longest lasting ones are always the first one to go off. That way I have... I have like maybe I might only get like 10, 15 seconds worth of um, full alpha strike, but that's every single one of these going off um, in that 10, 15 seconds. And then I have like another, yeah. you know, 10, 15, I think... whatever seconds um, as it like slowly peters off as things run out. I think MB but... does something sort of similar with those key He does some funky stuff. Mm -hmm. And and then these three down here are just to monitor everything. Gotcha. So, because I know everything that's up here, um, I have all of that stuff uh, memorized as to what's up there. This is just to monitor stuff down here. Um, and it keeps removing uh, Star Starfleet Ultimate Hybrid arms from up there, oh. which is why there was a gap in there. Oh, of course. That's not just STO. Yeah, because it's constantly dropping things. I'm always checking and seeing. You like said this you're... time. It top five percent and Abel and Chad is saying that they feel like a top 79 percent are watching this <laughs> they feel like I like I'm a 79 percent no that they are oh that they are <laughs> um so this one here is my uh current reroute to weapons um I could crank my uh, power transfer rate up even higher if I wound up going and popping the uh, science version of this in there. Um, I'd probably also, personally, I'd probably drop the Terran core. The, the Terran core, the, the issue with it is oh, that power that's a holdover. bonus. Yeah. That's a holdover. I, it, it, that was in there and just saved in there from when I gotcha. had that before I got this one. This is the one you're going to recommend, I take it? Yeah, yeah, one of the fleet ones. Some people also like the deuterium. I think it's deuterium. I don't remember. There, there's a crafted one some people use, but I think the fleet one's just easiest to obtain. Yeah, um, uh, crafted one. Well, I can check and oh, I just closed the window. Uh, R&D, uh, what would that be under? Uh, engineering. Engineering, okay. I haven't crafted a warp core before, so I don't know where half this stuff is. <laughs> I think it's a uh, bit of a random rule. Aegis Hyper Impulse Engines. Impulse Engines. Warp core. Item warp core? Yeah. I don't remember which version it is. Might be the Deuterium, it... or it's either Deuterium or Plasma Integrated is one, but I, I think the fleet version is like a mix of the two, whereas the mm -hmm. Deuterium or that other one specialize in one of the specific places like power cost reduction or EPS. Hmm. For reroute, I think you generally want, what's your EPS at right now? Oh, 391. So um, when I yeah, was trying it, out. I like, could kick it even higher if I dropped one of these things for the, um, uh, either an EPS console or uh, for the science version of this one here, which I uh, probably is sitting in my thing over here. Is it? Is it? No, it threw it back. Oh, there it is. Uh, the exotic particle field exciter yeah. EPS. Um, I don't have any use for any of the other stuff on there aside from the maximum shield capacity, but well, you know, if you're looking but for something still... else, there's also those Bellum consoles from Discarup. That would also at least give you some crit chance if you dropped like the sensor suspension burst. Uh, you could grab one of those Bellum consoles, and then that would give you still some crit chance and 
And that would also give you the EPS. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about as far as Vellum consoles. They're I, in the disco reputation. Hmm. If you go to the store at the bottom there. Um... Over to the left under traded marks. Wait, huh? Under traded marks, there's the store button there. Oh. And then uh, there's those Bellum. I think there's one of them. Bellum Monotanium or? There, there's talking? some other ones. I think there's one for EPS. Okay, right, that's probably. Uh... It's under one of the categories. Okay, so that's, so that's uh, crit hit chance, uh, kinetic and physical damage resistance rating. Check. Or is that one of those things where it can wind up with uh, EPS? It's under support upgrade? engineering, support engineering tab. Okay. Uh, Bellum EPS flow regulator. Yeah. And then keep in mind, huh. that's the Mark 12, so. Once you uh, upgrade that, I don't remember what the stats are at Mark 12. That's a cheap console to upgrade. Okay, I just bought the thing. Where did it go? Did I not? Item acquired. Uh, console engineering, Bell and MPS full regular. Yeah. Where did it go? It's uh, third from the oh, right. There, yeah. there, okay. Oh, it's, because it's got a yellow background, it was blending in with everything else. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, why am I not seeing this? <laughs> Upgrade, poof, easy upgrade. <laughs> that one point two percent crit chance. I mean, that's not bad. Yeah, that's probably uh, better than a lot of that science stuff that that other console had, which wasn't going to do really anything for you. You'll have to move. Oh, oh yeah, grain it, grain. One of those Good, consoles yeah. down to the science slot if you drop in suspension burst. I have had yeah, a full pot of coffee chips. Today was a rough day with us losing an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Um, yeah, if I was going to do something like that, it would be doing that and then putting that over there. And now I'm at almost 500 power transfer rate. Yeah, that then... should be enough for, for reroute with, with mm -hmm. the amount of weapons you have on. Yeah, well, well, I mean, even uh, even with sensor suspension burst on there before I had gone this, my testing, I was having no problem keeping my uh, engine power up. I would also like, probably... It are, like, it almost never dropped below 100 with a build, uh, b even before the swap I just did. I would probably swap your locators out for exploiters, because you're, you're sitting there at just passively in space at 70% crit chance. I imagine when you parse, you're seeing your weapons cap out at 100? Uh, not on this build, no. Uh -huh. um, I, my weapons were on the parsing and whatnot for this particular build. I was seeing around uh, b between 85 to 90%. Yeah. But here's my trades. <laughs> Um, on this particular one, the ones of note are uh, Weapon Emitter Overdrive because it um, is wonderful for uh, reroute reserves of weapons because it completely cancels out the uh, power drain. So that 50% increased power weapon, weapon power cost is completely negated. Um, improved Photonic Officer, um, tearing by. Vanguard Specialist, uh, piercing projectiles for the uh, shield uh, shield and hull penetration. Again, that was another reason for the uh, torpedo high yield. But that can also be swapped out. Um, this is the first thing that I would drop if you want to, if you were suggesting to drop something. And yeah. then cold heart and cold hearted to lean into the um, yeah. attack pattern beta. I would and especially probably... because. 
of how fast it stacks with um, reroute reserves the weapons going off. Yeah, I can imagine. I'd probably be dropping improved photonic officer on this build. Hmm. Piercing projectiles. That that can work there, but I would rather run something like universal designs there. Mm -hmm. Especially because you've got yeah, the phaser did... lance on. Uh, granted, but the uh, emulating phaser lance isn't capable of keeping that going on its own. It, because it shares the exact same cooldown time. So... Over a really long duration, yeah. But if you... I mean, if you're in something that's like under two minutes, you can time it. Uh, yeah, granted. It's one of the things I'm looking forward to because supposedly there's a 15 second cooldown on the um, on the console for the Texas class. Yeah, hopefully, because so, on the stream it was a little bit longer, but um, I think no, I, you and a few I, others said I, it was slowed actually, down. Actually, timed it because well, I mean, I was watching the stream and I, I watched him go and uh, put in the uh, time scale down to down to half so that's why it was taking so long for the thing to travel um gotcha. but even counting that in the stream and everything like that uh i counted it out it was a 15 second cooldown on his tray whether or not it's going to retain that 15 second cooldown is the question they may kick it up to 20 seconds just to have a no we're not allowing um you know a single console to perma proc um you know, universal designs, um, because that seems to be the well, they, they way have they that go already. with a lot of these. Hmm? There is what a do they have that permafrox? Uh, crystal prisms. They don't do much damage, but they will keep UD up the entire time. Oh. Uh, yeah, because they weren't very useful to me at the time, so I just stuffed them in my bank, and I haven't seen them since. Jay, I okay. don't remember if it's 15 or 20 seconds on Phaser Lance. I think it's 20. Okay. So just for my own understanding, why would you drop Improved Protonic Officer? Um, if you're on a better, science build, better for, for your type of build, I just don't think it's going to do too much for you. Um, I think you'd be better off with a trait that is going to boost your damage or your firing cycle ace a bit more. Something If you're looking for cooldown reduction, Calm Before the Storm, that's got 50% uptime, and that's giving you a fair bit of haste while it's active, and it's also giving you some cooldown reduction while it's also active. I'm so you're thinking that, uh, like, emergency weapon... Well, I don't have... Uh, yeah, I have emergency weapon. So, like, emergency weapon cycle and uh, calm before the storm? Yeah, you could do that, yeah. There's emergency weapon cycle... And yeah, if you do want to keep the torp on, you... I don't care. I don't actually care about the torp okay. if I'm you if I'm losing the uh, pen, uh, piercing projectiles. I'd also uh, probably drop your aux power down a little bit just to move your weapon and engine power back up. Where did my thing go? Um. Um, uh, to move what thing up? Uh, drop your aux power and move your engines and weapon power back up a little bit. Oh, or... the reason... Okay, so because you're completely canceling weapon power and everything, it, you're wasting anything you have above 125. Yeah. So as I have emergency power to weapons, bam, that's what 125. Uh, so that's exactly where it should be because anything over there, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> And then emergency power to engines, I have that balanced at the same thing, one, uh, 125. And so I just bounce back and forth between the two. Um, uh, with testing and everything, I've, I haven't been having a problem keeping, uh, keeping this going. Gotcha. So, yeah, so, so yeah, if the, you're the, testing it and having been... an issue, then yeah, you're fine. Okay. So, uh, stations, because I have no torpedo anymore. Um, the only other thing I can think of is to throw distributed targeting in there. Uh, question for you. The, well, 
I would think hemocyte lace weaponry uh, being a its own thing and not target dependent, that would be the one that you would want at the higher level, right? No. So the... if you don't have a torpedo on the build, the distributed targeting will do more for you. Uh, chemocyte does not proc anywhere near as much on a pure do build as it does mm -hmm. on a build that has even one torp on it. Yeah, but the, um, but the problem with uh, distributed targeting is it it goes off, then the thing that it you were targeted yeah. on dies, and then you lose all the rest of the distributed targeting because the target's foe. Yeah, Jay so, saying to keep the the chemo two on it looks like so. Yeah, I'd say keep that on because that's a good point because most things with single target are just going to die right away. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, this at least makes it useful without having the second um, interrupt that one second long interrupt from um, from tank team. And that's gonna bring me my bring me to my next point of I see those other team abilities, and I'm assuming those are just there for. It's like, oh shit, type buttons? Uh, those are primarily to proc my maneuverability and whatnot. Um, You're using the but, heal comp engines? Uh, fortified, yeah. yeah. Just keep in mind, when you do hit those, those are going to have the same issue you would have with attack team, where they have the same activation time. Yeah. I have seen that, but dropping one, uh, dropping one of them does, uh, from what I've noticed, does make a considerable um, impact. And because it's not a, because these ones aren't tactical. Uh, it, now, this has been my personal experience. I could be misreading this because uh, I'm, I'm not an expert on this. I just, uh, out of my friends, I'm the one that understands all the stuff the most. But that doesn't mean I understand everything. Um, but tactical team would actually interrupt my firing cycle even mid fire cycle but it doesn't seem like engineering and science team will stop a fire cycle already in progress i have not tested that yet that's something i want to test but i haven't done the testing with any of the teams yet so i can't okay. say for injury side team but i would say uh, i would personally drop the emergency power to engines down to one and rather than running engineering team i would say do an ox to sif because ox to sif that doesn't drain your ox power that that's going to be a heal that's on a much lower cooldown and that has a much better activation time and that also works very well as a, a trigger for boimler so yeah. do that instead pretty much yeah all right, still keeps the heal in there and drops that down. I'm going to have to rebalance my engine power. So lock weapons, because that's where it needs to be already. And that's going to be 20, so I need to mark this up 10. There we go. So resave. OK. Now that should, and then if I drop that to, yeah, there we go. And then crank this back up to about there. All right. <clears throat> uh, wait, am I even need to worrying about that at all? Does this have amp on it? Yes, it does. Okay. So it is useful. Okay. So I'll refigure out all this stuff once uh, once we figure out all that. Yeah. So anything else? Not that is I that... can really see here. I mean, the rest looks fine. Um... Agony Phaser Quad, Agony Phaser Dual Heavy, Terran Task Force uh, Phaser Dual Heavy, Terran Task Force Phaser Beam Array. Um, and the wide angle, yeah. Yeah, although uh, note to your audience and whatnot, this is still bugged on when it comes to weapon haste. It is not affect uh, the dual heavy beam bank from the from the disco is not currently affected properly and does not benefit from any weapon haste at all. The the Disco Dual Beam Bank has a few different issues too. 
Um, so that damage boost on it, that actually, it, yeah, the, the, the buff on it buffs everything on your build. So eventually at some point they're going to fix the, the disco wide arc dual beam banks and people are going to be taking a damage hit and they're going to be like, what the hell just happened? But it says bonus all damage. That's bonus all damage is supposed to hit everything on the build. Look at the bottom line of it. Critical strikes add plus 1% bonus damage to this weapon for 20 seconds. That's the part that's busted. Is that that up to 20% goes to everything, not just that weapon. Critical. Oh, so that's. Oh, I thought you were talking about the 2% bonus all damage from having level 6. Oh, no. The Discovery Legends tier 6 reach. Oh, okay. So the critical strikes add plus 1% bon plus bonus damage to this weapon for 20 seconds, up to 20%. One, okay. And. Okay, I honestly I had not under I had not known that I was I was just going off of the the um the set bonus the on crit plus one percent crit severity buff oh, yeah, for twenty seconds to, stacks of twenty five. That's supposed to go to everything. It's just that that mm -hmm. proc on the weapon itself is. I, I think it's been like that now for like half a year. Something like that. The other thing that I did see people mention in chat to your, are you running the, is that the Gamma Omni? Yeah. The, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's because, yeah, it's because I, otherwise I lack a lot of, uh, it, it helps balance out the Cat 2 to the Cat 1. And that's a lot of phaser uh, Cat 1 out of that with the, um, because that's a that's a total of thirty six point three uh, cat one. Yeah, it's basically another attack console worth of cat one. Mm -hmm. Exactly, which makes up for the fact that I'm not putting attack console in the universal slot. <laughs> um, but yeah, advanced inhibiting phaser omni, and then this is the uh, omnidirectional agony. And all of my stuff is crit D damage, crit D times as much as possible. <laughs> Have you tried? Go, well, it's not really that big of a difference going over to damage. But if you're stacking all the damage boosts, that can... Yeah, um, even on my Surgical Strikes build, which is my highest DPS build on the Hydra. Um, well, that's, I mean, that is my highest DPS build outright so far. Um is I'm getting about 750k DPS on target. Um, and I say it that way because it, depending upon if you're parsing ISA versus ISE or Wanted Argala, those numbers can vary drastically because ISE you can get up into the millions of, across the entire map. But you can't, good luck getting that across Wanted Argala. So but like doing one to dark gala i can hit like six i can hit like 750k dps on target per per target i see like i can tell exactly how many targets i've hit in that on the parse because i'll see that many spikes of 750k dps but even that one i still uh even though i've got like seven over 700 cat 2 damage on that particular build uh, and I did not even sure how to calculate the cat one because there's so many hidden sources of cat one. Um, even with that one, I do more, I parse higher DPS with crit D than I do with the DMG tags. Gotcha. And Chad is very, very stressed out about your, uh, loadout getting screwed over randomly. Hmm. What do you mean? I mean this. Oh, that they're saying to save it before it just randomly refreshes and screws up your loadout. Have you had it where you're just sitting in space looking at your build and then it like refreshes and brings up the last loadout? Uh, I have had that, and what I do is I'll I'll switch to a different loadout and then switch back to the one that I had. And if that doesn't want to work, I do a couple other switches and then go back, gotcha. and it usually fixes it. So. I always try to make sure I have at least three loadouts on a ship that I'm trying to save one specific one on to as a workaround for that particular bug. 
But and then uh, okay, so I am going to save this for the moment because even though I haven't redone this stuff yet, um, and so reroute reserves to weapons. Yeah, you can see I've done a lot of um, a lot of experimentation with builds on this ship. <laughs> That's a lot of loadouts. <laughs> And then there's going to be just one random update. So I've done this before on ships. One random update, going to brick all of them. Um, completely bricking them. I had that happen on my SOB character a while back. Every last loadout, every ship gone. Like I could, I could still see them, but when I went to hit them, none of them would work. Oh yeah, I, so I've had that happen like um like during a map transfer. It's like I'd click it and it was it would say um not all items in loadout match or you know that kind of thing, and it wouldn't actually switch. But I I change map and then do go to a completely different loadout that I haven't used in quite a while, and then switch back, and then that would that would wind up fixing it. But I don't know if that's the same problem you had. But I can say that. that being able to um, permanently not like completely borking the loadout to where I have to restart it from scratch, I have not run into that particular problem myself. It's not fun. I can imagine. <sighs> Although I mean, it it would wind up going and giving me a uh, a reason to go through and refresh my loadouts with current knowledge, but. Still a yeah. massive pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still a massive pain. But uh, let's see. So, if you had to swap out three things for three pilot consoles on this particular build as it is now, what would you swap out? Oof. Um, probably the the Gamma console, the Ultimate. And if I was just doing advanced content, probably DPRM. Uh, the, okay. the DPRM so is, is good for the survivability, but with how much cat do we have, it's that, that 40% isn't as big of a deal as it was when that console came out. It's still good, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I primarily put it on there because it's a, it's a good yeah, um, like nineteen percent directed energy damage. Uh, cat one is not it's not bad. It's just I'm writing into the problem where I'm, I'm I don't know like I I've heard so many different sources of like that like the damage increase from uh, up to fifteen epic isn't a base damage increase, but is instead a cat one addition into it um instead of so it says 2408.8 .8, but how does it get to that 2408.8 .8? is that a is that a base um damage and then cat one's added on top of that or is it do you, is it a lower base and then the it gets up to that because of cat one i'm not so, not the math person personally um yeah with all well, that well, stuff they and the game doesn't tell you either. Yeah. It's like it's like you have to figure it out through experimentation. And I've heard numbers ranging anywhere from uh, a 15 epic having uh, everything from a 50% cat one inherent bonus all the way up to a 300% cat one bonus inherent. Right. So let me. I think STO. <laughs> there is a breakdown of that on the the Sto build subreddit, and I think STO better also has a breakdown going over that. The still better folks are really good when it comes to the math side of things. Let me see if I can. Jay, do you have a link to that on Stowe Better that I can real quick? The uh, the amount of cat one that your weapons get from just being you know upgraded to fifteen. Uh, 
do I, or are you asking somebody uh, else? In chat, Jay. From, uh, or, oh, I gotcha. found it, I found it. Gotcha. Yeah, so you get 284%, almost 285% Cat 1 on Mark 15 gear. What about, uh, does Epic add anything to that? Because I I mean, I always wind up seeing a, uh, a difference in 15s going from Ultra Rare to Epic, and it always seems to be the same as going up a Mark. that link if you take a look at it so it's a cat one boost that each modifier gets um with the exception being if i recall the damage modifier yeah which is a three point uh yeah, three, a three percent increase overall yeah three percent final um okay so damage categories yeah, that should take you down to the the part where it's going over the weapons mark and rarity. Peppy category two, wearing verification final bonus multipliers, final bonuses. Amp is not a three a static three point three percent boost for reading the latest calculations. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. A weapon's mark determines the cat one bonus inherent to the weapon. Mark damage bonuses are cumulative. Okay, so it gets... Okay. So from mark... Uh, mark one is a is that. Mark two is uh, 10%. And it's the same 10% all the way up to 12. And then it starts becoming 54.7% for 13, 14, and 15. Have you taken a look at Trinity also? Uh, I don't know what you mean by Trinity. So the, the folks behind So Better have a tool called Trinity, and it's a really, really neat tool for going through and calculating your DPS. Um, hmm. okay. So let me send you a link to that. And I'll also drop the link in the chat. This is like, if you really want to dive in, and calculate everything on your build, like the, the cat one, two values, you know, just all that type of stuff. The Trinity tool is really, really good for that. And you can like plug in, see what traits would have a X type of impact. Okay. Now I'll take a look at that too. It will take a little bit of time to go through and like put mm -hmm. your build into Trinity. Um, you'll want to do file, like a copy of course, but like you can go in, dump your entire build over there, all the skills and all the stats and all that, and it'll let you dive really in and figure okay. out everything you'd want to know. All right. So um not seeing where the like it says it says weapon mark and rarity, but what I don't see the bonus from rarity. I think that's detailed a little bit or like a, each mod that you have on the build gives you a cat one bonus with the exception of some of the oh, epic 7.5 percent cat one bonus from rarity modifiers the very rare advanced radiant uh okay so nor do uh, Charles, I would say um, take a look at like the the builds Discord, get an idea of what type of ship people often use for your type of play style. Of weapon modifiers, yeah, yeah, yeah. up. Some of these weapon modifiers apply a 2.5% Cat One bonus to the weapon. Note a separate 2.5 Cat One bonus is applied for each of the modifiers. A weapon possesses, including times two, times three, and times four duplicates. 
No other rarity modifier is implicit or otherwise applies as cat uh, cat one bonus. Okay, so okay, so all that crit uh, crit D that I have, that's all another two point five. Um. Okay, so. That'd be that's basically five of those. So two point five. So that's another twelve point five. Okay, that would be why people were saying a Mark Fifteen Epic has a three hundred percent Cat One boost to it, because that's what that's what all of those plus the two eighty four pretty much add up to, or it's like or it's at least very close to it anyway. I know it doesn't quite hit 300, but... Yeah, it's close enough. And Jay's in chat. He worked on Trinity here quite a bit. Uh, it is faster than the other spreadsheets that existed before. Hmm. It, it's It'll be a little bit daunting to go in and put everything in Trinity, but once you do, really, really good. Yeah, it's literally like less than 3% off of 300, so adding all that in. Okay, so so that that information really does help me as far as uh, figuring out uh, balancing the Cat 1 to Cat 2. So that would explain why um, some of my prior calculations were off of expectations. Is this like I wasn't including or didn't know about things to include? Okay, so um, right. I was going to save that real quick. So then the uh full pile full pilot one is just going to be replacing those three. I mean, also, well, you'd have to see how your reroute is in combat, but you could potentially put one I'll of those just... three back on. Maybe the Bellum would go, but just have to wait and see how that goes in combat. Yeah, I mean, heck, I, and just that additional 1.6% critical chance. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't even know those things existed and whatnot because uh, so uh, often I've seen the stuff in the stores in there uh, be worthless in comparison to how many universal consoles I have. Yeah, so the... it's like I never even considered anything, even looking in the stores for anything good. The, the stores... Um, Typically, especially a lot of the older reps are just full of just absolute garbage. But there is some some good stuff hidden here or there. And especially with like those Bellum consoles. And you can get some of those free potentially with the random roll when you're doing the disco rep from those boxes. Um, but mm -hmm. it is nice to just have them right there in the store to be able to grab whenever. And they they have a lot of really good versions. The TAC ones aren't great, but the that the engineering and science ones are well yeah hardly anything beats out uh tactical yeah. consoles <laughs> the the locators or the um exploiters i just i just wish the um the exploiters gave you an equivalent of what the vulnerability locators give you because it's like the they set the precedent up here with the weapons in that a uh, a crit D tag is worth 20% 20, um, 20 crit severity. Um, but, in, and that a crit hit tag is worth 2% crit hit. And so those two tags are supposed to be equivalent to each other, but you get 2% cr uh, critical chance down here, but you get half that in the crit severity. So, um, 
according to their own precedent set with the weapons, uh, the exploiters are inherently worth half of a, uh, generally, of what a vulnerability locator is worth. <laughs> In, unless you're already hitting 100% crit. <laughs> I mentioned these things myself because if you if I happen to be mistaken on something, feel free to correct me because uh, in, uh, in chat rather... you, you, with chat, man, it's you say anything mm -hmm. wrong, it's the internet. But that's how you get oh, your answer is you say the wrong thing and then they'll correct you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean it's like am I being corrected on any of that? You know, it's like is I'm not seeing anything so far. Okay. Um I'll worry about my Alpha Strike stuff later. I'm looking for ammo leading phaser lance at the moment. But I totally want other versions of the emulating phaser lance, like emulating plasma lance, in, in emulating disruptor. You know, cause like, I figured like, other, that would be a, like a, a really good dill sync. If you have the Deimos, you have the ability to go in, or, or imagine if you had the ability to go into the dill store and spend a ton of dill on getting alternate versions of the emulating phaser lance. And that would further boost sales of that ship. But knowing cryptic, what they would rather do instead is release other ships that just have those alternative versions of the console so that you have mm -hmm. to pay more. But I, I um, think it's dill sync idea yeah, that worked. Well, just, well. well, just like they, just like they did with the quad cannons, you got the phaser quad cannons, the agony phaser quad cannons, the disruptor quad cannons, the plasma. I believe you have plasma and polar on pl quad cannons yeah. as well. <laughs> um, but I'm not. I'm, I, in fact, I know there's a polar on. I'm not the one. I'm not certain about is the other one. Um, plasma? There is. It's on the Arkeef. Mm, I think okay. it is the like their strike wing escort that the ROMs have. Right, that's why I was looking for emulating phase lines. There it is. Pop that over there. Yeah, everything but Tetrion and Antiproton. Pop down here, toss the weapons capacitor over here as a filler. And what else do I got over here? Nothing else with a clicky. Hmm. Okay. If I don't have anything else with a clicky, then I fill that up with that. And I guess that's it for now. I'll, I'll, I don't want to waste your time and whatnot with uh, stuff that doesn't need to be worried about. Uh, oh, that I can fine. do later. Okay. So this is at least functional now. Um. So I can just drop that back down, close that. So I'm thinking um, for like doing a video on this, on the ship and all that, like build wise, like reroute, you know, we already talked about, um, but I'd also be curious just to see the difference between CSV and reroute to see if the single target DPS from reroute on the test map how that actually stacks up against CSV, because I don't think I've actually done that yet. Uh, the, the CSV still is king of the hill on that by a large margin, just because AOE outdoes single target DPS for yeah. total DPS. Um, but it, I'm pretty certain that if it still comes down to single target is all CSV has to shoot out, reroute reserves the weapons will beat it out by quite a bit. Because you're losing literally two thirds of your DPS if you're stuck down to one target. Yeah, well on paper, the reason I'm thinking of that is because mm -hmm. um when Jay had went through and did the the math on reroute after the change, it was far ahead of all the other single target firing modes. I mean it's still, like you said, mm -hmm. it's behind CSV. But I'm just curious. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I I like got an on... outright. I got a 24.8 percent increase in damage just for switching from beam overload to reroute reserves to weapons. So yeah, that that was a huge boost. <laughs> and 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 I mean like 
I'm not talking like a, a 24% cat one increase. I mean, my final damage was 24% higher. Uh, <laughs> Having Voyager... an optimized overload to an optimized reroute reserves to weapons. Voyager's <laughs> asking my level about up. <laughs> surgical strikes first reroute. And I think reroute does come in ahead. And I think that's what Jay just sent me. Let me pull that up on screen here. Well, that'll depend on what this what this build does here, because um, my Hydra reroute reserves the weapons was hitting 750 to 775k DPS on target. Um, that's not counting traveling between targets or having to worry about the um, about you know the massive DPS loss because somebody's got to yak at you for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. On paper. Reroute should, I believe, be coming out ahead on on paper yeah. from the math. But I think mm -hmm. one of the big issues we had with reroute um, was that you get to a point in general with too much firing cycle haste where sometimes your weapons don't seem to fire. Hmm. Let me I know they did a breakdown on still build separate. Let me. I mean, I, I, I'm set up for a Wanted Argala run to do a quick test on a parse, and I can see how this turns out with current loadout. Go on screen. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, first two already dead. <laughs> yeah, according to the math, reroute should actually be beating out surgical strikes by quite a bit, it looks like. Distant, I, I think the, the legendary pilot bug ship probably would beat it out. Okay, so once you're done here, I'm going to pull those numbers up on the screen. send you this link to post and then I'll pull it up on screen.
So, um, for reroute... And, and warped out. Rank 3 was netting a 186% damage increase for Surgical Strikes 3, which was netting 127.8% damage increase. So reroute, in theory, should be able to beat Surgical Strikes. There's the graph on screen that I already showed. Okay. Yeah, let me post it in the chat. Yeah, Surgical Strikes is definitely a bit simpler to use because you don't have to worry about the engine power stuff, but reroute has a little bit more little bit more work that goes into it, but that can you know that can pay off. Yeah, so with that particular build, I'm uh on this on that particular run, I wound up hitting uh on target DPS was right around 700k with some spikes hitting uh hitting a million without the alpha strike. So uh, so yeah, that's on par with my surgical strikes build. Uh, very close to on par. So yeah, I mean that was also a fun run too. It was yeah. just like it was just and obliterate and obliterate and obliterate. <laughs> For reference, I'm gonna. I don't have my Mars class set up yet because at yours here. I'm gonna swap over to my surgical strikes build and just run that through our gala real quick, just so I can uh -huh. see those numbers against single targets. Because I'm looking, you're looking at the damage to each of the individual targets. Like the, yeah. the DPS, okay. Let me yeah, yeah. That, that's what I mean by damage on target. Yeah. Is I'm I, I'm not counting uh, like all of the stuff. I'm I'm looking at like you know where a lot of my bars are topping out at, um, like per target. And so how much DPS do I get when I what was my DPS um, spike on that particular target and i can usually yeah. tell how many uh targets i've taken out because they all have that dps spike that hits that high it's like i did have some that were only like 500k uh on a couple of those in there but for going over the average and how i i find it more consistent because it's it's map agnostic not target agnostic but at least map agnostic um for determining the dps because I can get completely different numbers with the same build if you're talking about doing a, uh, you know, what people consider a DPS record run. Go for ISE, and people got that thing so narrowed down and optimized and everything, they know exactly what they need to do to be able to wipe out everything on that map all the way up to the final, um, you know, tactical con yeah. console before attack pattern alpha runs out. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, okay, so congratulations, you did the entire map on your alpha strike. I want to know what my single target DPS is using just my spam bar. <laughs> so. And because that's generally what I consider my DPS. What am I, what is my minimum baseline DPS when I'm yeah, going in there content. doing just, yeah, single player content, just my spam bar. Not even worrying about the Alpha Strike. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, that did work really well. Um, and I did, and I will say, I, I think I did notice a little bit of a difference between not having to worry about the engineering team versus uh, auxiliary power of structural integrity. Yeah, Ox to Sif is nice because you can literally just spam bar. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had the other stuff spam bar too. But. <laughs> I mean, I I would replace science team with like transfer shield strength, but transfer shield strength's cooldown is so damn long, it's ridiculous. Actually, better off as I see. But uh, thank you for the reminder on the structure uh, ox to sift because no the problem. the uh, I had forgotten about that. The only other build that I had that used Ox to Sif was Ox to Sif in conjunction with a uh, uh, Rhythmic Rumble. 
and that was for a PvP build that never actually got off the ground. Rhythmic Rumble's a trait that I actually need to, to mess around with. Yeah. I love theory crafting and stuff like that too. So I mean, it's like you know, I I know I'm not an expert on these things in STO, but uh, compared to like you know what I would consider some individuals to have like you know the doctorate in DPS because they're you know sitting there hitting two million DPS, <laughs> and it's like uh, I'm not so you're prepared. looking at the which tab <laughs> damage damage two mm -hmm. damage which one are you looking at? Oh, uh, DMG chart. So the DMD chart will give you the vertical bars and the and your damage off to the left. Or so like you'll hit you'll see two hundred, four hundred, six hundred, or or whatever yeah. it scales it to. And then a bunch of vertical blue bars over to your to the right. And then below all that you'll have your um your combat duration, your DPS, total damage, all that. Gotcha. Um but D DPS bar will just it gives you the exact same information as your uh, your DPS listed underneath it, and DPS chart gives you the line. And on the line, it's like I had this massive spike, and then it drops down, and then it starts climbing down up and whatnot. And that massive drop in the DPS is because of the conversation. So I go to the damage chart, and then I can just ignore the massive white space there and just look. Okay, where are most of mine, you know, hitting? And I have most of mine hitting around the 700k, a couple of spikes up into the 800 and million, uh, uh, like one hits over 800k, one hits a million. Um, but I've got, you know, uh, like four spikes on here hitting 700 and everything else is hitting at least 600 across the rest of them. So if I account for an 800 and a 1 million and that helps me average against some of these other ones, I'm hitting right around on target, right around 700. So I'm hitting a little bit more than that with my uh, Surgical Strikes build on my Hydra though. When you're looking at the the overall like player combat analysis or player combat analysis reports and looking at the damage too, do you ever mm -hmm. look at that to to see your damage to each of the targets with a bit more specific detail? Uh, yeah, I do on occasion. Uh, so, um, for running base numbers and seeing general performance, I just I use wanted argala personally because it's that's the one i'm most familiar with that's the one i have the most mental data points for so it's the easiest one for me to go and you know com run comparison um but like uh let's see analysis report uh so damage to uh Uh, Space hmm. FX, the endeavors add a massive amount of damage potential. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Endeavor rank 404. That's a lot of crit chance. That's a lot of cat one. They, mm -hmm. they really add up. Yeah, they do. That, that's like 40 consoles worth of bonuses. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the 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 to <laughs> Kazon carrier number twenty nine ten stuff like that as a um, Mage Colors flagship three point eight uh, million damage done to it uh, target debuff ninety two percent hit rate one hundred crit rate ninety four point nine six. Um, some of my stuff's hitting a hundred percent. Yeah, with your crit chance on stuff, like when you're looking at to the targets, 
the number is always going to be dragged down by any pets you have in, any allies um, mm-hmm. that may be registered as your as your responsibility. Like it, it just that all drags. Yeah, there's down. some. Yeah, and there's some abilities that just can't crit yeah. either. You know, I was saying, I, I really wish that they, they would uh, separate that those out. If it doesn't inherit your crit chance, don't include it against my crit chance. <laughs> But what one of the other things that winds up going and dragging down my DPS on per target is the fact that I have like the little ultimate guy going out there oh, and hitting yeah. them before I do. And he does piddly little damage. And so like I'm seeing my damage on the damage chart hit uh set like you know hitting that seven hundred K but my highest one is Mage Cullis flagship and is registering twenty three thousand <laughs> DPS. And I'm like, okay, I know I had a higher damage, <laughs> a higher DPS against him than that. <laughs> yeah, because I would not have killed him that quick if that was that was told. that console. I honestly, I don't run the ultimate console much anymore because mm-hmm. that little drone irritates it just it irritates the shit out of me. I don't and... mind it for for running around on my own, but there are plenty of times I will actually replace it with something else because um, I'm like doing a test or I'm playing around with a friend or I, I don't want the ultimate giving away my location. <laughs> oh, um, other little, uh, I guess this would be a note for those that like their toys on their ships. Um. I have a switch starship here. Uh, stolen Bring me eagle. Back up. Yeah. Switching out to the stolen eagle now. Arctic Chief said that drone is apparently good for form up. I didn't even think of that. I do. I think I heard some conversation about that, but I never like followed up to see if that was actually working. To it's use... also good for the hydro console. Yeah. The because the, the hydro console uh, clicky, uh, the ultimate uh, will. Um, participate. <laughs> it would be a good way to say it. Quintin okay. Roshenko is mad that I I swore. I apologize. Apologize, Quintin. Sorry. It's, he's a troll. Don't worry. Yeah, I kind of figured as much. I, I've I've seen your videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Quintin. How them paintings going, man? Did you get your website back up? I'm switching over to. Oh, sorry, you're talking. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. Um, I switched over to the, the Nimbus one uh, because I can have things activate that won't activate at ESD. Yeah. Um. So this is just a little note for people that like their their toys. I found a way to triple up on cloak ambush. So you can actually have three cloak ambushes going at the same time and that is um as you can see i was already cloaked by standing still and i activated my my battle cloak and if i go and activate attack pattern beta and then move so what i do is i uh i move deactivate activate that and now you can see on there three active cloak ambushes very nice on my on my bar and those are all independent of each other. That's now, at the moment, and on this particular one, each of those is 50% bonus damage for 27 and a half seconds. So that's 150 bonus damage. So you got She's and, a Predator, the normal cloak, and then the console off the eagle all, all triggering their own ambush. Not the console. Covert, uh, covert munitions. Oh. The uh, covert munitions um, uh, set bonus is hidden payload. You okay. sit still, it cloaks you. You start moving, it gives you the cloak ambush. And there's no cooldown on it. As, it but it's only an out of combat thing. So you can enter combat with a triple, um, triple cloak ambush. And I think that's hilarious. <laughs> nice and this cheesy. Is, this like is it. my... 
<laughs> yeah, this is my uh, quantum cloak torp build. This is not a meta torp build at in the slightest. The purpose of this is just it is a theme build. It is I am going to uh, blast you with quantum, anything and everything quantum. <laughs> Which is why I'm looking forward to the Texas class because the it gives us a quantum torpedo experimental weapon. Hopefully, and, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just hoping that it'll actually be boosted by you know my quantum vulnerability locator. So I'm gesturing at my screen like you guys can see me, <laughs> just just for your own mental hilarity there. <laughs> um, uh, blast you with quantum. Chat <laughs> yeah. says they haven't heard that since Fallout Four. <laughs> So you guys just like stick quantum in front of everything <laughs> um, in this ship? Yes. <laughs> uh, whole image refractors, twenty percent all damage. I'm pretty sure that will affect the uh, the that all damage is going to affect the experimental weapon. I, I would hope. <laughs> it is. It fires projectiles. I expect the twenty five percent projectile damage to affect it. Um, I twenty six point three percent projectile weapon damage i expect that projectile um because it says projectile weapon not torpedo weapon um 28 projectile um this one i don't expect because this one says 19 percent mine and torpedo damage because it's an experimental weapon so experimental isn't a mine or a torpedo so i would not expect that one 22.3 percent quantum projectile damage it's it says it's throwing out quantum projectiles, so I would expect that one to to proc as well. You would so hope. I'm hoping I, it, we will see. But it, it, this is what I'm hoping for. But I'm hoping this is that this particular loadout is like a massive boost to that particular experimental weapon and the console, um, so that it's like you know, hey, I might actually be able to outdo this always on wave impeller, maybe. <laughs> But it'll still fit with the theme for sure. So I mean, yeah. I'll use it on this particular build. I uh, think regardless. the existing torpedo experimental weapons. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they're boosted by like because there's already two torpedo experimental weapons. There's the mm -hmm. photon one off of the Iridorn, and the quantum mm -hmm. one off the uh, the adamant. I don't recall if those are actually boosted or not by their torp. Items. I'm going to well, lean towards the no. Well, I know the uh, the experimental weapon that does the antiproton one is. As I the uh, uh, what is that one called? I don't. I'm not sure if I can. No, I don't have it here. Um, experimental proton charge. I think is what it's called. It does antiproton damage, and it's boosted by everything that boosts antiproton damage. Also, so is the uh, the phaser uh, torpedo is boosted um, by both uh, torpedo and by uh, phaser uh, boost. Um, but as far as experimental weapons, uh, I know the the most reliable thing is anything that says all damage. Yeah. Um, and that's where. The, uh, the World Razor trait. So I'm, I'm working on a review for that, finally. And mm -hmm. the World Razor trait actually is really, really good for boosting, or if you need, like, an all-damage boost, because it stacks. So if you have... I don't even know what the trait is for the World When Razor. you hit firing modes, it gives you 25% cat 1. And if you shoot someone that has a control effect on you, it doubles that to 50% cat 1 per stack. So if you have, it's bugged right now and doesn't work with mine firing modes, and I think some of the spec firing modes, but if you're using uh, like cannon scatter volley, beam overload, and like a torp spread or high yield, you can get three stacks of that. So that is 75% cat one that you can basically have up the entire time for everything. And that's not mm -hmm. much for your weapons, but you know, for, for other- A lot for experimental. If we're an experimental and some consoles or some niche abilities, that's that is quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then that can double if you are shooting someone that hit you with a control. So that could potentially be up to 150 percent cat one. Yeah. There. Hmm. 
Oh, and uh, since you have told me about this little particular thing, I'm going to swap out structural integrity collapse for Oxtasif. No, I haven't played it. Yeah, Oxtasif is really good. It's it it doesn't get as much use as it really should. Yeah. I'm just gonna basically swap those two out because insert lesson learned, therefore update <laughs> um Oxtasif be here and here. And the other one was structural integrity class, which is gonna be like down here. Here it is. It's going to be here and here. OK, back to status. Save to quantum cloak top. So yeah, the, the, like I said, this this is not meant to be a torp meta build or anything like that. And I mean, I even have photon rapid fire. You know, it's like that's this one here is just the, you know, I have the um, the secondary torpedo launcher uh, three set bonus from the Terran uh, weapon set. And that one combined with, um, you know, concentrate firepower three and all that stuff, I'm sitting there basically pumping out like 80 torpedoes um, in that 20 second period. And it just gets nuts. But I also think it's absolutely hilarious that this particular build gets photon torpedoes up to like 100k up per torpedo. <laughs> so. I mean, that's still only like, you know, 200k DPS, not even close, but I mean, the fact that I can get torpedoes up to 200k DPS means I can go into the, you know, the, the Badlands and not have to worry about their freaking um, feedback pulse. Bro broken feedback pulse. Yeah. You know, the thing is, too, <laughs> the, what's really crazy about feedback pulse, the NPC feedback pulse is the exact same as the player version. The difference is. We just do that much more damage to NPCs than mm -hmm. than what they can do to us. Well, okay. So I have several complaints about feedback pulse specifically as a skill. I get the idea that it exists. It's like, okay, cool. Um, but there should be some certain limitations on it. Feedback pulse should never be able to do more damage than the current current amount of shield points you have in your shield, because it's the it's the um, it's hitting the shield. The shield does something to create the feedback pulse, which should send it up, send it back. So the strength of the feedback pulse should be limited by whatever shield facing you're hitting. Two, it shouldn't work on cannons. There is no beam for the feedback pulse to travel along. That's you can't feedback on a, on a cannon. <laughs> that that so, is a very good immersion-related point that... Yes. It's not a beam. Yeah. Oh, and I've even asked them during 10 Forward Weekly, it's like, why does Feedback Pulse work on cannons? Their response? Uh, good science. When you ask things on 10 Forward, you're never going to get really that detail of a response. Um, yeah. Oh, they couldn't even give a real response. It's like they... Yeah. Like, cause science is like, uh, that's if, basically, if you, we don't have a fucking clue, man. Stop asking me. If you ask Kale any, like, of that systems related questions, he's just not going to have an answer. I mean, you've seen when he plays the game, he doesn't know oh, what's they going on. I don't even think they understand meta builds themselves. They do. I think the, the Jonathan guy that's taken over for Bordicus, I think he has a bit of a better understanding than most of the, the devs that we've interacted with uh, in this game. And I think that it's good that there's there's some people like that, but I wish that there was an overall better understanding of how people actually played the game. And I think if they actually understood how many of us play the game long term, that would be beneficial to try and create content that would keep more people engaged over a long period rather than people coming into this game and getting burnt out after a couple months because they've played everything and they don't feel like doing the DPS chase or PvP or whatever. Yeah. Thomas, I'm glad that you're trying out Cold Hearted again. Cold Hearted still really good. Yeah, the damage, the damage resistance uh, hit 
the especially with how fast it stacks up under reroute reserves the weapons is like because it's, it's just the, those first couple of little hits that it hits and it's just their history yeah they did replace andre emerson um but they didn't his position became available but he didn't leave the company he moved to a higher position within the company so like he, he's still within cryptic but yeah. for STO specifically it is someone new in charge Here might be a question for you. On this weapon specifically, I've got two of the Kelvin timeline tor photon torpedo launchers. I could swap one of these out for this weapon right here. That's a Dyson proton weapon. The um, the difference would be this three the uh, set three bonus particle stabilizers. Now I'll go ahead and more details of this one here. What that does is an additional 10% crit chance with photon projectile weapons and plus 10% crit severity. But do you think the um, the DPS drop, because th that particular one has a base D list of DPS of 4,000 DPS, um, that drops down to about 1,000 for the weapon? Because it's I, like... I would say give it a shot. I mean, the the... Kelvin Torps fire so fast that with a build like this, you would hope that it'd be back up quick anyways. So, I mean, you could try it, um, you know, with yeah. any, any specific things like that, it, it's hard to say exactly how much of a difference that's going to be. It's okay. that, that would be, that's where I wish we had the test map on live because little things like that would be much easier for us to to like say for sure if we could just go in and easily test them you know mm -hmm. one versus the other yeah they said they want to but i just don't know if they're going to be able to I, I don't i mean my my thing is is i what's so hard about just okay the code exists over there select all copy paste the the issue is well, there's two different issues. The first issue is one that they've said isn't an issue and that it that's that it could enable people to do endeavors too easily. Um the other issue and the like you can't the, just go into Argala. Yeah. <laughs> the the other the really big issue is that they have their own baked in parser into it. And as soon as you would have a couple dozen people even turning that on and doing that at the same time the server performance would would take quite a bit of a hit so i i think that they just need to strip that portion out and give us the the test map without their baked in parser because we have let it, yeah let let us use our parser yeah we have third party parsers that are going to give us a lot more information than any of their really simple in-game parsers ever would like all it does is tell you you did this amount of damage this your dps mm -hmm. like it is as basic of a combat meter as you can get so i'd say just strip yeah. that out give us the test map. but but here's the thing it's like it get it goes and gives you that information whether you want to parse or not that it it throws that into the uh into the combat uh um uh, into the combat channel and so uh, why would that drag down the um drag anything down if it, everybody's using it by, by default already it's it was like it was copying or it was doing all the the metrics calculations over on the um on the server rather than having it done locally is what I think was going on. So Chad is saying that there's something wrong with the Mars class cloak. Have you no, noticed any issues with the cloak? Nope. Chuck, uh, what, what's wrong with the, if the anything, cloak? The, 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 the Mars, Fe the Federation battle cloak is the best cloak in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> 
but because it's a it's a two second cloak instead of a three second cloak, <laughs> and it's a metal cloak. Everything about it's working fine for me. Yeah. Uh, but that's very Oh, right, because I had that's why there's a gap there. Um, but yeah. The, uh, the only thing, the only thing that I've noticed is on occasion, sometimes it will, um, uh, it'll be unavailable during something for some unknown reason. Um, but that usually goes away after a couple of seconds. I'm guessing that's just because I'm like, you know, being grabbed by a tractor beam yeah. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck is saying that when they go into the cloak, they can't get out if they're in red alert. So. They're having the bug where you get stuck in a cloak and it won't let you leave. And they're on console, but that's a, something that happened or has happened quite a bit on PC. Oh, also. yes. The, um, okay, so a few updates ago. Um, I, mean, I mean, like major updates. Uh, I think this wound up happening when they first launched the, uh, the Terran Gambit um, campaign, the first episode of Jupiter Iratus um or whatever whichever one it is i'll take a look at it real quick um tearing gambits oh firewall um redshifts is the one i was thinking of but uh when they first launched that one uh i remember them that they wound up going and uh what the glitch was was that if you wound up accidentally double clicking the cloak um, it would put you into cloak, and that if you wind up going and uh, clicking it too fast, that you could get yourself stuck in cloak, uh, because it uh, it would register that you turned off the cloak, but you'd still be in cloak. But because you were in cloak, you couldn't now click the cloak, so it was it got you stuck in this catch twenty two. At least on PC, they've already fixed that, uh, so that doesn't happen anymore on PC. Um, but I would imagine that that bug probably still exists on console. <laughs> yeah, console's always a few updates behind. And Cloak yeah, in general, like, th there's been issues with Cloak for, for over a decade where you get stuck in Cloak like that. I remember having issues like mm -hmm. that back in 2013. It's just always been an issue. Yeah. But, um, oh, side note about cloaks. Uh, if you do have the um, the hidden payload cloak active and you activate about uh, your regular cloak as well, those values stack. Um, I've actually tested this with a friend of mine in PvP. Um, the, the values will stack and you will get a stealth value of, of like right around 10,000. Um, so if anybody has an inventive way to use that in PVP against individuals who love to see through cloak and actually have cloak be viable <laughs> in a PVP match somehow, um, feel free to experiment on that. <laughs> but... It fixed all the cloaks on console, not just 32nd century. Since you have to sit tight, it's trash in PvP, is what Gamma said. Oh, granted, but I mean, it's like if you're if you weren't in if if you get to the center and you can get that little, uh, you know, um, sitting there. But like I said, I mean, there's ways to double up on on stuff like that. So, what was the other cloak that you were mentioning? Um. So you've got, for ambushes, you've got your baked-in cloak, you've got She's a Predator for the ambush, mm -hmm. and then also the Eagle console technically puts you into a battle cloak. But I don't I don't recall if that gives you ambush. Uh, well, I can test that real quick. Switching to Eagle. So... My lo and yes, I named it the Stolen Eagle. <laughs> um, okay, so you're talking about this one here, the destruction of enemy area defenses. Yeah. Um, 
okay so so that one there i i don't know if that stacks or not because it says it just puts you at 9999 stealth right then and there so um there's 15 seconds uh 12 seconds 10 seconds i'll undo that it gives you a cloak ambush Uh, no, I have back ambush, ambush going. Okay, but it is the same cloak. It, it is the same cloak ambush as the baked in cloak gives you. Gotcha. And so, um, won't yeah, let you so, stack more. Yeah, it won't. It won't let you stack. Um, now I have no way of being able to tell if it stacks the the like if you're already. Uh, say you know battle cloak like that and then you activate this does that add another 10,000 on top of the 5244.2 I have no idea I have no way to be able to tell unless you want to like you know join me in a pvp how can you detect me experiment <laughs> I don't have any of that, that would answer it, but... hmm? I don't have any of the like pvp cloak finding stuff set up Oh, it's really easy. All you'd have to do is just go, uh, I go right up onto your nose, and you have your auxiliary set up all the all the way up, and then I set my auxiliary set all the way down. And then as long as you can see me and with my enhanced battle cloak, if I then activate the destruction of area and enemy area defenses cloak, and if I vanish off your senses from, uh, from that, uh, it's either then... That would show that it stacks, but whether or not it stacks higher than the ten thousand, I don't know. Uh, but if we can get you to where you can see me uh, with the destruction of area enemy area defenses active, but not the battle cloak, and then I disappear with the battle cloak active, uh, or when I activate it, then we would know that the values themselves stack. So that would actually give you 15 seconds worth of um, uh, worth of like 15,000 cloak, which good luck seeing through it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't there also like a wasn't there a console that gave a ton of stealth? Also, not that one. Or am I thinking defense? There's a low low rank Romulan console that gives you a lot of some defense. I'm not sure if it's stealth or. Yeah, I don't know. But I like the fact they give you a little 15% bonus all damage when you uh, have the enhanced battle cloak going. So it's like it gives you a little miniature ambush <laughs> while you're still cloaked. But, but yeah. I, I just have to say is like I I really like that they put the ship in the game because it's like it it fits my desire for you know more meaningful pilot ships and um, and it allowed me to actually have a viable torpedo build <laughs> even if it's not like a you know meta <laughs> yeah. And then, um, well, I mean that that ship can do well. Those Theta torp builds do quite well. Theta torp builds. Um, so using the, those the the ships or the torp boats that have at least Lieutenant Commander seat that also have the enhanced battle cloak. Um, so like the Tamir, the legendary Talis, and now the Eagle. Um, people will use them with Assault Formation Theta off of the legendary Talis, and then they're getting a ton of high yields off of that. So they're they're going in and out of Cloak to, to generate more high yields. Huh. OK. Uh, traits. I, I assume that something like that's a Starship trait. Yeah, it's off of the legendary Talis, Assault Formation Theta. Okay, I have the legendary to list. I have not gotten the um, trade off of it though, so I'll take a look at that later. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
here is my 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 crit D surgical strikes. This is the the one that had 750k reliably on the targets. And this is well, this is what it looks like. The older Prometheus skins, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the, it's uh, Cerberus like author upper and lower hull, uh, Cerberus um, um, nacelles, and then the pylons are Hephaestus on the top and Prometheus on the bottom, because that lines them up decently. I have another version of that where it's uh, Hestia um, top and bottom. Uh, Cerberus nacelles and saucer, and then Prometheus, uh, Prometheus upper and lower pylons, because those also line up properly there. But I just like this particular look. And I've got I the uh, Mako show. shield on there. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just so happy we finally have a, a five forward um, advanced escort. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's like even if they change it from escort to destroyer, but I mean destroyer is uh, accuracy rating, crit severity, crit chance, and energy and kinetic damage. So I mean, the destroyer is my i is pretty much my ideal um, mastery package anyway. <laughs> I'd rather have destroyer over escort. For sure. I think the warship one's slightly better. Oh, the warship is has the destroyer. I think. I can check. Was shock have... the Texas class didn't have five forward weapons? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the Texas uh, being four threes. Legendary rough. pilot warship. Okay, so so here in, here's incoming warship to take a look at the mastery package. I if I recall correctly, it's exactly the same as the destroyer mastery package. Um, accuracy, critical severity. This should be critical chance, and that should be energy. Yeah, the the warship has the uh, the warships have the destroyer mastery package. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, continue on outside. I don't care about that. Okay, back to taste of Bando. <laughs> oh, and that's uh, that's the theme of this character, by the way. Um, is the character's name is Crittles, and she is captain of Taste the Pain Bell. Very nice. So, can't take credit for um, for originality on that one, but I thought it was absolutely hilarious because the, I was designing the character around crit chance it fit. So, but there, but here's my loadout for um, my surgical strikes, which. Um, the reason that some of these things are not um, like this one isn't the um, isn't the sensor thing. It's a Dominion Defense. This is the console that I have that best balanced it and gave me some critical severity. I still hit a uh, hundred percent crit rate uh, with this build, which is even with all of the uh, exploiters on here instead. So. I don't know if you if there's any advice you would want to throw in on this one or not. Um, the the tachyo is fine, but you know you, you don't always need to have the the turn rate from that on a faster ship like this, especially. So mm -hmm. that that could be swapped off for. Uh, what, yeah, what could I, you swap that I, that's for? actually mostly on there for the crit severity. It's, it's 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 not the turn rate. It's the crit severity and the crit chance helps me balance right at a hundred percent and try and feel like I'm not wasting. I any. I would probably personally rather have the tachyon net drones on if I'm going for a console with that type of crit chance and severity. It's a slightly lower amount, but um, especially in like solo content, you hit that against a boss, there will be a slight activation issue with it, but it. Which which console is that? Tachyon Netrons. It comes off the Bozeman. Okay, I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Bozeman Intel uh, frigate. It was a sea store ship last year. Hmm. Okay. 
and uh, 29, 24, 19, again, uh, this has just become somewhat my default um, uh, duty officer uh, roster. <laughs> but this one is all crit severity buffs instead. Those don't stack. Uh, oh, yeah, it's it's not for the stacking. It's uh, because it, it doesn't stack the... Uh, the crit severity, it's just well, the chance. Well, the crit, crit severity stacks three times. Yeah. But here's one of the little quirks about when you have the same duty officer like this, and I found this out with the um, with the uh, chance for shield penetration, is that the um, if each one of these, when uh, when it gets a chance to roll for it, each one of them gets their own individual roll. But if any one of them procs, all three of them proc. So. If I hit that four percent chance on any one of them, it instantly stacks to three, instead of having to uh, rely on three independent four percent chances. The first four percent chance that it hits, I get an instant three stacks of that. I would, so. even with that, I personally would still run a crit chance one just to get that extra bit of crit chance from that, and then. Like, yeah, but I mean, I'm already this. Yeah. This particular build, at least, this is the this is the only reason I'm running all three crit severity, is because this this build's already hitting 100% crit chance. The other thing that I would be changing would probably be putting on the emergency con hologram just for the speed boost. But if you feel like you're moving around fast enough, mm -hmm. then that's fine. But generally, I I like to have the emergency con hologram on virtually every build. Yeah. I mean, you can see the turn rate on yeah. that is, you know, and when I'm doing doing my spam bar, if I have four heels on there, that that's almost all going, or that's going almost all the time. So, but that's where I'm sitting at. But I mean, like I said, if, if you have any um, any particular advice. I'm definitely willing to listen. <laughs> um, the only other thing that I would say would be maybe consider picking up some haste consoles. Like, I know with the Surgical Strikes uh, type build, mixed out, I saw your message. Don't spam me with that picture. Um, I would say oh. just some Firing Cycle haste. So, like, there... uh, Temporal trajectory shifter, um, yeah, it, I see OPOG there. Yeah. The uh, let's see activating beam or cannon. Yeah, that does. Yeah, th yeah, that that procs overpowered never again. But yeah, I've got I've got that uh, emergency weapon cycle, uh, calm before the storm. Um. Improve critical systems for the crit severity more than the crit chance. But, um, if you want to take a look at my Hydra build, I do have it posted in the Discord under the STO section here. Yeah, so I saw that earlier today when yeah. I was taking a look at that. Uh, so I'll take a closer look at it later. But, but I, I want yeah. CSV because uh, with infected, especially. Just CSV will just absolutely mm -hmm. destroy surgical strikes and all these other single target firing modes. Oh yeah, uh, for um, for me, it's I'm not going for DPS records. I'm going for as much single target DPS as I can get because that's how I like to play. I like to focus on one target at a time. <laughs> yeah, I, I would and definitely annihilate them. I would definitely look into that Tachyon Netron's console because I I think the debuff from that. When you hit that on a group of enemies or a big boss, that is really quite potent. And that's a sea store ship, thankfully, if you don't already have it. Yeah, let's see, you're saying uh, crit chance, swap with active duty. So we could toss that on there, and I could do. Um, the activation time on the Tachyon entrance does suck, but the debuff is really good. And it takes their shields off.
the, the activation times of gamma. Let me pull up account net terms on the screen here. So 1% crit chance, 10% severity, 76 starship perception skill, and then it gives you a scaling debuff that will scale with your ox power. It'll knock their shields offline for a short duration, and it, it's like a three kilometer net that will just debuff everything within that area. Mm -hmm. But it's just the activation time that sucks on it. Takes like a second or two to activate. <laughs> you, you named your Mars uh, pilot escort after me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta build it out still, but it's Tachyon that drones two second activation time. That is brutal. So with the Mars class here, I'll, I'll be sending it up here shortly, but the, uh, the console that comes on it, how's your results with that, Ben? Uh... It's a nice toy, but that's about it. I've had better results with um, Harris. I'll, I'll show you one of my other uh, builds here. Uh, to just get back here. Um, uh, actually, back. Okay, apparently it does not like to play well with my push to talk button. Now it actually believes I'm back in the game. <laughs> uh, okay, so okay, ruin with a single target build is not always the best. Um, ruin really works best with an aoe based build that can generate lots of kills quickly um if you're doing single target i mean it could still work it's just not going to build up stacks as quickly because you just are not killing a ton of targets very quick so Here's one of the things that I wound up um, putting together uh, on Taste the Pain Bow here, the, my Hydra. Um, this is this is a toy build. This is I want to have fun with clickies while I kill things. Things of particular note on this build is that with all the toys and everything, I wound up going with a whole bunch of stuff to just incidentally happen to have a lot of shield penetration as well as hole penetration. So I've got a uh, 157.5 Starship shield penetration, 20.9% uh, Starship hole penetration. I don't know if that's actually a percent or not, because most things that give hole penetration is a, a value, not a percentage. So I don't know how that's actually working because it says improves hull penetration for starship weapons. That's usually a tag that it puts on the skill, but this actually has a percent sign behind it. So that console but... right there is disappointment. I tried that out after I picked it up and I was hoping mm -hmm. that it would be a lot better than it ended up being. And the damage yeah. on it just was not impressive. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's it's on there just because it it does have some hull penetration and whatnot, and it's like I said, this is not. I didn't even design this thing for DPS. This is this was. I just want to sit here and have fun. Um, 
then we got uh, 47.5 Starship Shield Penetration. Um, that's just a 20% all damage. Um, we've got the MVAM, of course. Then we've got uh, 41.8 Starship Shield Penetration up here. 20% uh, directed energy weapon damage. Uh, Quantum. This is this gets into the toys with the hidden payload for the uh, free cloak. Um, then I upgraded, even though it is an Intel chip that comes with a cloak, I still upgraded it to a battle cloak. Um, and that's one of the things that I think that, that they should uh, have in here is that you shouldn't need to put the cloaking device on a ship that already has a built-in cloak to get the upgrade to the uh, advanced cloaking technologies upgrade to battle cloak. It already has a cloak. It should count. <laughs> Um, but I upgraded it to a battle cloak anyway, because what's the use of a regular cloak? <laughs> um, and then the, and this one was for the clickies, and then you got the shield, more shield penetration with the emulating phaser lamps. So, um, yeah, coming down to the uh, tactical uh, skills down here, we have starship shield penetration and starship hull penetration, and if I just do that, that knocks it up to 352 hole penetration and 622 shield penetration, which equates to quite a bit. <laughs> and just because of that, along with the attack pattern beta debuffing that comes along with all that, I still managed to pull out over 500k DPS on target with this build. And I don't even have a single locator on here. If you know how to pilot a ship, you'd be surprised what you can get away with. I mean, <laughs> keep in mind, like, it was 2020, I think. They, I, I think it was Cheezers took in a, like, a Tier 2 ship into a, a supported infected elite with just the the EBM on and subspatial, and they got it to almost a million. Jeez. Like, if you know how to pilot, you can get mm -hmm. away with a lot of what most people would say are bad decisions. It's just yeah. for the general player base, we recommend those things because people aren't at that skill level. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, in different rank 405, not 404. It was 404 earlier today. <sighs> That's a game changer right there. 405 yeah, said 404. 404 to 405. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because then you can find your Endeavor rank again. It's not Endeavor rank 404 not found. <laughs> But yeah, uh, crit chance, crit severity, damage, the, the, all of that's maxed out there. I'm getting close on other stuff. I'm keeping this as, as many of these open as I can so that, um, because I, the only times I've ever picked a ground slot is when it's given me nothing but ground. This is how many times it's forced me to pick ground. I'm largely the same way. I try to not pick ground yeah. unless it absolutely forces me to. Yeah. So what I've noticed is that if if I have more stuff that's not that's really close to maxed out but isn't quite maxed out, it'll often give me um, those uh, space choices more often than trying to lock me out. Um. So we're, even getting like the exotic damage a few times, and I do like no exotic damage on anything. Um, I've still gotten like those sometimes rather than um, rather than maxing something out just so that I can like keep it uh, as many space options available in the pool as I can. Because yeah, I totally would have been designed the Endeavor system differently. I would have let you pick what you wanted to get. <laughs> Instead of, oh, you get a choice of these three for this point. Yeah, they they need to to go through. And I would say, too, like once you finish the Endeavor system, there needs to be an actual incentive to keep grinding it. I think it should like take the XP that you earn and roll that into like a random thing that you could potentially get every every time you would normally get a perk point. Imagine if it did a random drawing and it's like, OK, you'll get Let's like, you know it banks your perk points, right? Apparently, like they've you... stopped that now. After oh. the la after the six hundred to seven fifty jump, that was not intended, and they, Vorticus said after that, 
that they went through to make sure that this it didn't stack like that anymore. Oh, well, good to know in case they wind up upping it again because yeah. I would have kept I would have actually kept doing the endeavors because I thought would have thought the points were being banked. I would have been pissed if I went through all that work and just to find out that they they denied us that and I was like, eh. <laughs> The only the only reason to do the endeavors is just the reward boxes at that point. Yeah. So, and they need to give you better rewards <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Absolutely. But I mean, if you've gone through and you've earned the that that doesn't make any sense. Is like uh, why they wouldn't. I get it wasn't just because it wasn't intended, but I mean, why would they punish the players like that? I mean, it's cryptic. They've got a history of going in and, you know, screwing over the players. Um, do you remember the, the Delta Rising stuff where people got punished for leveling too fast? Wait, punished for leveling too fast? Yeah, after Delta Rising has came out, or after Delta Rising came out, like back 2014, the, mm -hmm. that was when they gave introduced level 60 so it went from 50 to 60 yeah. and then there were specialization points and all that so people went through and quickly leveled up their up to 60 and then got were making really good progress in specializations and they were largely doing it via patrols and people found mm -hmm. that they could team for patrols to to do them real efficiently against more enemies to get more xp yeah I remember. and i don't remember anybody I, I don't recall anybody being punished for it though they they did after after the first couple of days because there were people already at 60 with quite a few spec points done uh they they went through and punished people that had leveled too quickly and it caused a massive backlash it's like it's like don't punish us for your damn mistake first off it's like you allowed it and it's like, you know, you didn't say, hey, we know about this exploit, don't use it, you know, or what have you. But what did they do to punish them? They, like, reset them or something, or what? They took the levels away. And there were people that were just playing the content, like, playing the story missions, that had, like, levels rolled back, spec points taken away, things like that. It was a massive shit show. And I would say that's one of the big factors because it was it was a lot of drama back then. That was one of the the big things that definitely pushed away a lot of veteran players at that point. Like all of the issues with Delta Rising killed like half of my fleet. And I know it was the same for a lot of fleets where just mm -hmm. half the players that had been playing before pretty much called it quits because of all the issues that had popped up and how Cryptic addressed them. Cryptic handled them poorly. Um, and uh, there was a lot of crap going towards Cryptic and their response on Priority One was basically Delta Rising is the best expansion ever and the players love it. Right, even though they lost half their players. Although they lost a lot of the active long, like the, the veteran regular mm -hmm. players. Yeah, they lost a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's like the players loved it. I mean, uh, on the STO for official forums and everything, my signature is still uh, uh, Star Trek on uh, Star Trek Online Delta Rising: The Fall of PvP, <laughs> because it was when the specialization systems came out that PvP got so yeah. massively imbalanced it became not worth playing. And that's when we found out who the gatekeepers were. <laughs> and it's like. Because, I mean, it, you could easily go into a PvP queue uh, before that and be able to have fun. And it's like, oh, okay. And it's like, okay, I might have lost the first one or whatnot. But, you know, four, four or five, you still get a couple of wins in there. Yeah, and, Delta yeah. Rising really, from the PvP point of view, really did impact things quite a bit. Because that is, that, the introduction of starship trade specializations all that started to really widen the gap between players in pvp and it also increased the the power creep massively um you know before delta rising it was nowhere near as easy to go in and you know just vape someone right away and mm -hmm. that there were builds to go in and 
instantly vaporize a player, um, but they weren't like what we have now. Where you can go in with just a normal beam overload build and basically like one or two shot a, a, another player, especially if they don't have invincible yeah. and all that. Well, it wasn't even just that, too. It was also the fact that, like, uh, it's like up until a recent fix where they put a cap on uh, hull image refractors, yeah. there was the interplay bug that they had between hull image refractors and the um, co and the colony consoles. And people would stack millions of um, of temporary hit points between hull image refractors and... Um, because each of those uh, colony consoles would have their own proc, and so you just fit, sit there, keep activating your stuff and whatnot, and you would just keep rank, cranking up the uh, temporary hit points. So by the time the enemy came in, if they didn't know about that particular trick, and man, did they keep a tight lid on that knowledge, too. Um, I didn't even find out about it until they fixed it, because it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Cryptic announced that they fixed this bug. Wait, that was bugged? <laughs> And it's There's... like that's when most people found out about that little bug was was when it got fixed. <laughs> yeah, there, there's they, a lot they of little bugs. They kept that knowledge like crazy. They swore people to secrecy before telling them. And it's like in in some of those cases, and I know this because uh, one of my fleet mates uh, was in um, was in had a character in one of the other PvP fleets, and they would not tell him how to do that unless he swore to keep it quiet to not tell anyone. And it's like, now, if that's not gatekeeping the knowledge, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, the gatekeeping knowledge in PvP has always been a thing. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not going to tell you because then you, you know, you'll have an advantage. Yeah, the or, same can know. apply, or the same thing happens still to this day in PvE for the DPS chase. Um, and usually the reasoning there, I mean, some some of the people that do the high-end runs are, have no problem explaining every last aspect of them. To, to people mm -hmm. but there's some of the stuff some of the abilities that people will go through and use in those runs they don't want to share publicly because the general they, they think that the it's not relevant to the the average dps player um and that it's just like doesn't need to be out there in the wild so that that stuff happens even in pv mm -hmm. christopher thank you yeah, that, not not nearly to the same level in my experience, however. For sure. In PvP, there's a much more competitive environment um, than there is with the DPS chase. So. Like Spencer's yeah, gatekeeping... Yeah, be one of the... <laughs> terrible chops. <laughs> Spencer's gatekeeping what? Knowledge of big market board control. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have my own ways of making, you know... Um, money <laughs> i was like oh you're fine to live in there we go um i have my own ways of basically making massive amounts of vc and whatnot and it's like it's, it's not that hard on the exchange it's, just, it's like just pay attention to what's selling for a lot you know <laughs> yeah i uh i was doing a video series a couple months back going from zero ec to two billion and mm -hmm. What if what I really like I already knew this, but it was just a really big awakening or reminder of the, the fact that the STO market is is too small to share some of those methods publicly. Because I did some members only videos that mm -hmm. just showing that to just the just the channel members caused those markets to crash. Ah, yeah. Uh so how long did it take me to get to the two billion? It took me a couple months, but realistically, I was there within a couple weeks because I went and focused on a part of the DOF market that was really niche. It's just that the demand wasn't there at the time, mm -hmm. but a couple months later, the demand was there, and I was able to offload all of those DOFs, basically six of them, for two billion EC total. Mm -hmm. I mean, he hell, I. I've made half a billion in one day uh, by selling stuff on the exchange. And I'm not talking about stuff from lockboxes or anything. I'm talking about stuff that I either crafted or bought and, tur and turned around and sold. 
I have I've sold freaking uh things like uh Photonic Officer One, the the training manual that you buy from the vendor for like I think it's a thousand EC. And I've sold that thing for eighty thousand on the exchange. Fun fact, that's how I started the uh the EC challenge. <laughs> so it's like what people will buy off the exchange just because they have disposable income and don't want to walk to the vendor because <laughs> that's where they happen to be at the moment it's i'll like... pull this up on screen on the on the stream but i started off basically with like a week's worth of endeavor boxes which gave me 2.9 million ec i bought uh some of the lockbox DOF assignments to try those. I bought DOFs to run them. Um, you you got gypped on the EC. I get a lot more than that per week. Yeah, I, I did get screwed over there. Then I did buy some of these bridge officer training manuals from the vendor because, you know, they're like you said, they're dirt cheap. So I was selling mm -hmm. like a uh, tractor beam one. I paid 250 EC per manual. And then I flipped around and I sold some of them for 250K per yeah <laughs> so like the, the the profit was nuts and then because i was doing the doffing aspect i was able to go in and take advantage of that also and that's not something that you know if, if you're not familiar with the doff market you're not gonna have a good time but after like the first week basically i'd gone up to like 60 million and it was largely because i i had pulled a specific doff from one of the uh doff packs i opened and i got lucky but uh, there's a lot of rng to it and rng and thank you for the uh 20 gifted there <laughs> no worries And it'll list off every single one they got one. <laughs> and market supply, yeah, Waldo. Pain going to the training vendor or for the boss vendor, yeah. Hey, Stu got one too. <laughs> We've been trying to it. I do need to actually set up the Mars here. <laughs> yeah. Over to that window. So I'm I'm gonna go a little bit different in that I'm gonna I'm gonna go pure pure cannons up front, I think. But I'll still go there. Oh, now you have the now you have the train of announcements on your oh, cover yeah. up it's, here. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. <laughs> Okay. I guess I could do at least the turn or the uh, the wide angle dual beam bank. I don't actually know how the um how the Terran beam does against a cannon there for like reroute or um surgical strikes. I don't know if it actually beats out a regular cannon. I guess I'll slot it and see. Oh, the the Terran cannon? The the Terran beam, I mean Terran beam. If that actually oh, beats a dual heavy cannon. Uh in my experience, uh just barely. But yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, all the Terran stuff is an automatic on me for uh for firing modes that affect both cans and be uh, cannons and beams. It's the same. I, I don't understand why they went dual heavy cannons for the Terran, but beam array instead of dual beam bank. Because it's like, if they did the DHC, why didn't they do the top yeah. end beam? <laughs> I accidentally, one day, I went through and I bought... 
like another four phase or exploiters thinking I didn't have any on this character. Turns out I already had a set of five and it just didn't show up because the map I was on. Oh, so I've got nine right. of them now. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you can put seven of them on a um on a ship if, not, yeah. if it's a miracle worker. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit different here, and then I'm gonna run. Oof. This is the issue with these the haste consoles on these single target builds, like temporal trajectory shifter. Whatever I put this on, they're they're dead. But <laughs> I need EPS for reroute right, so I'm gonna go. Instead of the Gamma con or Omni, I'm going to go with the Trilithium. That console gives a little bit of EPS. And now I'm probably going to have to drop my Bio Neural, aren't I? Well, the, the, a little bit, if if by a little bit you mean 70%, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it gives, it gives a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. I'm curious what your uh, base stats are going to look like as you do, as you do these. Oh, got a question towards Stu, if you're still listening and whatnot. Uh, do you have a Mars class? Which which Stu? Mick Stud or 1701? Uh, uh, 1701. MC Stu. 1701. How's the experimental weapon off this thing? Any good for you, or...? Uh, what was the experimental weapon? Subspace pocket projector. Uh, it's a it's a fun toy, but again, it's a toy. Okay. Um, it, n nothing in so far has really beaten out the souls on um wave impeller, because apparently, um, as Augie once said, the um. The Risings love to moonlight as um, weapon manufacturers. <laughs> Find which bridge officer I need here. I wish the bridge officers would just automatically change to the specialization of whatever seat you put them in. Yeah, really, really nice. That'd be a very nice quality of life thing to add, yeah. So I'm going to go a slightly different route, and then I'm going to bring in a couple more uncommon abilities onto the build. Um, yeah, no for... Oh, um, I don't know if you know the answer to the question or not. Uh, did they wind up fixing the lack of stacking problem with the um, Watcher buffs? I think they did. I believe they stack. I know they're supposed to stack, but last time I tested it, they didn't. I can test that again real quick. Guess I'm just going to have a high yield on for like a passive in a can in there. Kurds, I see you there. Here, red specialist is on. I hope POG doesn't work with this, right? Uh, with what? With uh, reroute. Reroute doesn't trigger it, right? Should go check. Yep, reroute does not trigger overpowered and overgunned, isn't it? Yeah. That would be too nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, but to be honest, I mean, it's like it's. The overpowered and overgunned isn't that, that. big a boost. <laughs> I mean, it, honestly, it's like as nice as that trait is, it's a filler trait for me. It's a if I did, can't think of anything better to put there. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So having removed all of my bridge officers, I'm at 37.5. I come over here and I'll just toss a uh, WT1 on there. 
Christopher, the builds Discord, link down in the description below. Lots of different builds over there. Okay, 41.5. You're right. The uh, the jug trait would be really good here. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I don't have that on this character right now. That's probably what I'm going to use my event campaign on on this character. Overpowered and overgun doesn't trigger off of reroute, so that's the issue with using it on a build like this. Is the tractor beam with REA? That route here. See, I'll I'll put ruin on, but the the issue with ruin here is you're gonna see with single target it just doesn't have as much of a punch. Doesn't build the stacks up as quickly. Should be fine. There's a few uncon abilities there, so. Oh, I'm missing flyer apart. Okay, I knew I was missing something. One. Fly her apart's actually really good. Been very impressed with it. You are right that I don't need to have my weapons power up as high here. Because my weapons power will not be drained by my weapons firing with this build. Yeah, if you want, uh, if you have emergency power to weapons going, you just want it to basically just sit right at 125 or 130 if you've got something that kicks it up that high. Amazing trait, pilfered power. No, I have not, Chell. Okay, so I just swapped out all of my SROs. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. My crit chance dropped from my global. Dropped from 57.2 down to 56.2. I actually lost a percent when I should have gained 5%. Thank you, Kurt. Um, So if you're on a Romulan captain, SROs, so the watchers still stack. It's just that SROs stack too well. Um, basically, each SRO you put on your build is giving you like 3% crit chance right now. Eh? Yeah, if you're on a Romulan with Romulan superior Romulan bridge officers, they are broken. They have been for a very long time. Uh, if I, I go, they that, well, they fixed it and then immediately rebroke re it. So the let's see, because I, I mean, I am a Romulan faction, yes, but I'm I'm on an alien character. Yeah, yeah. So you have the actual like Romulan bridge officers, the like the actual Romulans, not from the embassy, correct? Correct. Yeah, then they've been broken for like the last half year. If you uh, look at the screen right now, I guess I can send you this too. Okay, uh, um, take like a look at me. Putting four SROs on took me from 37 point, basically 37% crit chance all the way up to 50%. So, again, like... Supposed to give you 10%. Why? This is a build that only had four. Four bridge oh, officers, so should have given you eight percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I have what? like an extra five and a half percent per chance there. So no buff one uh thirty six or uh no crit, crit chance thirty six point nine. 
to 41.4. 40, 41, 43. 43, it's okay. So going from two to three, you're getting an extra. Yeah. And, and three then you're getting. Also. And then you're getting uh, three and a half. So, yeah, that's still only a difference of um, yeah. The it's the crit the, chance the, and severity the, they're broke. Yeah, the well, your crit chance going from thirty six point nine should go from 36.9 uh, to 38.9, but it jumps uh, another huge chunk <laughs> just for your first SRO. Okay. Moonstorm, the Lucari Hokun is a good ship for the console. It's a really powerful AoE heal, and it's like the best console to do any healing for NPC allies. It, it's really good for that, if that's what you're looking for. So yeah, it's a lot more crit chance and severity than we should be getting, but that's been around like that now for a while, and Cryptic has pretty much checked out on it, to be honest with you. So in other words, they're, they're leaving the bug that makes Romulans the king of DPS. Pretty much. Okay, so for my uh, uh, for my own testing here, um, okay, so I just took every single one of my bridge officers off, and I have forty point two percent crit chance. I could do cold hearted here. I don't have cold hearted on this character. Yep. And I went from 40.2 to 43.2. So something that was supposed to give me 2% crit chance uh, gave me 3% crit chance. Gotta love it. Cryptic quality. Now you keep mispronouncing it. It's pronounced craptic. It's a joke, obviously. I know, I know. I know. Just in case, just in case, other individual sarcasm detectors were broken. I feel like I'm going to need an EPS console here, so I'm going to go grab my conductive. CS off an alt. Could I change override for ionic turbulence if I wanted another Uncon? Yeah. But uh, I like OSS for the power boost. I know, Chell, but I've got it and. You know, if I if I have it, then why not use it? Speaking of epic tokens and the deluxe, let's see how is the deluxe right now. Backlog is, go is back again, and in 12 hours, it'll be gone again. Seems to be the pattern right now. Uh, Cheops, Scylla, and Charybdis? I don't, I don't know. Grim? I know. Great.
The RCS EPS is something I put money into a long time ago, and I, I need to just have justification for why I still continue to have it on my character. I have a feeling I'm about to get disconnected from STO for attempting to load into my bridge. Chasm, EPS is DPS, I know. Okay, so yeah. Um, well, that explains what's going on there, why I'm lo missing a whole like, percentage point. Because um, each one of those is giving 3.5% crit chance, except for the first one, which only gives 3. Yeah, so what's happening is your bridge officers are getting access to their racial traits. So if you look at like a Gemidar, if you have one of those, if you slot one of them, you're going to get a even more crit chance because you'll get like... A, I think it's six and a half percent crit chance just by slotting one. Really? Yeah. Damn. If you have a Gemidar Vanguard, go try it. Yeah, how do I get that on my Romulan? <laughs> well, if you have the Gamma pack, you can claim it right in the uh, C store under the personnel tab. Gemidar Vanguard Bridge Osters. You have to have the big gamma expansion pack in order. On the cost like 150 bucks normally. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause it, uh oh this playable. Um Yeah, I don't think you have them. If you go to the expansion packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You... Oh, Gamma Vanguard pack. 15,000. Yeah. 15, um... yeah. That goes yeah, on I don't sale. Have that. But it's, 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 it's questionable if that's really worth it, you know? Yeah. But I mean, giving, giving other, char uh, other characters access to the uh, bridge officer. Is it just one, or can you uh, claim multiple of them? You can. Get a tack injured psi on every character on your account. One tack, one engineer, one psi? Yep. But only and the first like... one gives you that big amount of crit chance and severity. Oh, okay. So you'd only grab one and yeah, they... throw them on there for like double the SRO boost. Basically, their normal state is that they're half of an SRO. So their, their trait is supposed to just be 1% crit chance, 2.5 severity, and then 7.5% cat one all weapon damage. Mm -hmm. But because the uh, the racial trait from the Jemadars is stacking with them, they're getting like another 4.5% or 5% crit chance on top of that, and then all the other the buffs there. So they're, they're dipping into th pools they shouldn't be able to dip into. Pretty much every bridge officer is doing that right now. If your bridge officer has a racial trait, then it's getting access to it and it's not supposed to. But the, the so, Romulan from the So Amazon, that's why I'm getting um like a large uh like on on some of my bills for some reason it, it winds up giving me like a twenty three second um ambush timer. Yeah even though it should be only like 15 seconds. Yeah, if you're slotting a Riemann, then yeah, I think it, it's giving you the, you're getting your Superior Infiltrator, and then you're getting the Racial one, which is just normal Infiltrator, so that's what's going on there. But it's not giving me the basic Infiltrator. Correct. Which is why it's not the full 27 and a half. Okay. Uh, reinforcement Squadrons isn't that good, Chops. The, the damage Unless from it... Unless you're running the Hydra console. Yeah. 
Well, you could use it to spawn for the, the extra damage from that, but the the actual reinforcement squadrons themselves don't do too much damage. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take this into a wanted then. I think everything's good. Uh, watching your stream. Oh, I did not want the console on. So you name it after me because I gave it to you? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that how you remember who gave you your ships? I honestly, I feel like I I am dealing with so many people in Stowe in the past couple of months. Like I, I, I try to not be disrespectful about it, but it's like it, it gets rough sometimes going in and trying to remember every every last name. I feel bad about it, you know. But hey, I, I suck at names too, you know, and it's like I mean I'll remember your face because I've seen it on stream. <laughs> so. Oh, you do not get the Jemadar Vanguards from the Legendary Gamma Pack. It gives you some other one. Definitely had much more efficient target acquisition than I did in that first group. Looks like our fight took you longer to per, per the first Let's one. I wait for the pets. Yeah, I always wait for the pets to be spawned and then I hit them with the immolating phaser lance and it just wipes them out. I think I just got screwed over by Blamler. This is where not having the Photonic Officer on screwed me over. Oh, yeah. This, this part's going real slow. I mean, the rest of it felt pretty fast, but that was definitely a bit slow near the end. Yeah, I between your build and mine, I think it's I think our differences in D Yeah, I don't have cold hearted yeah, on. Yeah, see, even with that, you still pulled out two twenty seven on your total map DPS, whereas I'm hitting like one eighty. Yeah, the target debuff really screwed me there. If I would have had cold hearted on and my crit chance was still good, even like I, for me, if I'm over ninety percent crit chance, I'm content with that. It's ninety five there. And you were saying to look at the damage chart before. So it's mm -hmm. nothing too too impressive. Like there's one big spike there, but yeah. But you see how on there you got like you know three solid ones in the seven hundred area. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I mean, yours looks very similar to how mine wind up looking, like even right down to where I expect the spikes to be. Um, the biggest difference, however, is you don't have nearly the same size gaps between group acquisitions. 
like you're pretty much you've got that one fine tuned down to where you're already pointed at the next group before they even spawn. So it's like that's the the infected infected DPS player aspect of me of you memorize the map and you get to the locations. Yeah. So, uh, but that being said, seeing seeing the difference between and how much of a difference that makes, just a uh, target acquisition time being that much lower gave you another 50, 50 DPS at least, or 50k DPS at least. Um, between like 50, almost 100k DPS in some, uh, for some of my runs. But let's see 180 yeah 57k dps with a build you helped me put together real quick and i was using the the... biggest difference the biggest difference i see is the target acquisition the other thing too i was using the pilot three piece that one so Uh i could if i took those off because those do not really they don't really do that much for you. No, it's mostly just for making damn sure your uh, pilot abilities are um, on cooldown. On on minimum cooldown. They're fun to use, though. Yeah. But, I mean, in, in all honesty, it's like on, on some of the builds that I have, uh, especially if I'm using Photonic Officer 2, an improved Photonic Officer, I'm debating honestly just dropping boimlers because it's like all the stuff that I'm really worried about making sure it's on minimum cooldown is getting there just from Photonic Officer 2. I don't need boimler for most of the stuff. And the stuff that the boimler is proccing doesn't make that big a difference because we're talking only a few seconds difference at most between minimum cooldown or when Photonic Officer would get, would, um, get it cooled down so yeah skills this should work on the legendary defiant the original pilot consoles um can be used on any pilot escort raptor or pilot warbird now they recently updated it to make sure that they could work on the mars uh so the only ships that those things that those three will go on uh at least last time i checked was the Mars class and how they fixed it, and all of the original three uh, three ship sets. So the Andorian pilot, the um, Federation pilot, the pilot Raptors, and the pilot Warbirds. Um, the legendary uh, pilot um, Defiant, they will not go on right. because it isn't it isn't an escort. Gonna have to bug them to change that. <laughs> Oh, I already have. Good, good, good. We got a. That being said, if they if they have if they have fixed it, I I mean I can go and do a quick check and see if uh, they'll fit on there. Nah, uh, just looking at the wording, they shouldn't, because that is a pilot warship. Yeah, even though it comes from a complete escort line, every ship before it is an escort. <laughs> Starting with the tactical escort. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it should have been able to. Honestly, I think they should. It, they were only ever intending escorts to have pilot maneuvers when they first came out with them, which is why I think they worded it that way. Um, but they wound up coming up with other things. And at least according to some of the support crew there uh, with the email that I got from them, they there's some of them that think that the pilot console should go on any ship with pilot maneuvers, period. Regardless if it's an escort or not. <laughs> and I tend to agree, they should. Because <laughs> it should just simply go on a pilot ship. I think they need to be a lot less restrictive with things like that. Also, I am really far outside the map, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think in general, like that's one thing monetization-wise, that, there's so many of the older older ship consoles, like we would still use these things if they could be used on other ships. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's one thing where if they were smart, they would go back through, remove a lot of those restrictions, because 
that's just enabling them to monetize existing things that they've already done. Just don't even have to make something new. You just go in, toggle it, remove that, you know, just remove that restriction. Yeah. Uh, well, the so uh, to be clear, it's not a restriction so much on the ships, how the things are set up in the code, is that each console has a list of ships that it can be put on. And if it tries to put on a ship that isn't on the list, it says cl um, uh, class restriction not met or class requirement not met. Um, so let's see, loadout, full pilot. There we go. And then I can bring that over to my inventory. Nice thing about loadouts, if I have something I know is in a loadout, I don't have to go back to the bank to grab it. <laughs> it's like a uh, squashed frog. Yeah, and I know some people also made this uh, like a comparison to a crab. Mm hmm. Battle crab. I remember people calling this. Yep. Yeah, very crabby. Okay, so yeah, legendary pilot warship will not, it, the uh, pilot consoles are completely grayed out. Right. And if I try to put one on, class requirements not met because they decided it was a warship instead of an escort. Um, now, I'm pretty sure that the Adamant Terran, uh, the Terran Adamant Raider, that's an Intel ship, right? Uh, yeah. Terran Adamant. Yeah. I actually have a, I have the same skin on my Adamant as I do uh, with the, uh, uh, the uh, legendary pilot. One. Quentin says, if I came across a crab or frog that looked like that, I sure wouldn't eat it. <laughs> and yeah, uh, now this one makes far more sense because it's an Intel ship instead of a pilot ship. So of course they're not going to fit on that one then. But yeah, the one of the main reasons they wound up going and even bothering to fix it is because it was very clear in the advertised war wording, pilot escort, any pilot escort. But when they first wound up going and putting the uh, consoles together, they intended pilot escort to be, oh, these three Federation ships. Because when they came out with it, those three Federation ships were the only pilot escorts. And then, uh, so any pilot escort, pilot raptor, or pilot warbird was supposed to be the the factions, basically. Escort, raptor, and warbird. But then they came out with the Mars class pilot escort. Therefore, by the wording, they said, okay, they finally buckled after two years of me bugging them about it. Waiting for the randoms here to kill the last group at this board, red alert. So that I could try to quickly take the boss out. I did it, finally. Yeah, take out one group or take out a couple groups fast and wait for the others. That gives them a chance to get their damage in too. Because that's something that is often complained about. Is DPS players going in and nuking the entire map too fast? Oh, especially with um, when people go in there with the hey, let's uh, vacuum up the entire map into one area. 
and then blow it up. <laughs> Yeah, I think those should work on the Andorian ships. Okay. I hate to have to bail out. I know I haven't spent a ton of time flying the, the ship around so far, but I need to go help my family with some stuff, and we've been going for about three hours now. So hey, again, no worries, man. thank you. Rover stuff matters. <laughs> I'm being pinged about some potential drama, looks like, on the builds Discord. Mm. Thank you again also for the ship, the gifted subs and all that. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries, man. Oh, it's it's fun, and I look forward to messing around with the ship a little bit more, because it is a fun little ship to mess around with. It's definitely yeah, and unique. I, look for... I also look forward to messing around with the uh, stuff off the Texas class, just for the sake of testing yeah. them. And a, a reminder, too, I, I think you already know, but uh, for the rest of the stream, um, there will be a stream on Thursday where I'll be taking a look at the Texas class, probably right after the patch ends. Server comes up. Cool. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you on it. You all for stopping by? Yeah, for today.